guests that are in attendance. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the Regional Water Sustainability Project list update. Okay, I'm going to turn that over to uh, Neely Miller and he'll walk us through that, that topic. Thank you, Mr. Patton. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, as Mr. Patton indicated, I'm gonna talk through the Regional Water Sustainability Priority List um, update. Just a little bit of background, as you'll recall, uh, back in July of 2021, the board adopted an initial list to help guide the board's spending for large projects. Um, and then according to criteria adopted by the board in 2022, projects on the regional priority list must achieve, help achieve water sustainability on a regional basin-wide or statewide basis. The board has adopted a criteria for inclusion of projects on the list, which defines how projects can be added, information required and requested some submittals, considerations for inclusion, and a process for removing projects from the list. Um, the criteria also indicates that the list will be updated annually at the board's regularly scheduled January meeting. Due to time constraints at the 2024 January board meeting, this topic was moved to March. And staff has developed proposed updates to that list that I will now present to the Finance Committee. And as I walk through this list, let me know if I need to slow down or uh, explain anything. Um, initially, what we've done here is this is we've put some some language at the beginning of the list. So a lot of times this list will get printed off and carried around and then people don't know the context for the list. So we've added a little bit of language here at the beginning to, to help people understand that are carrying around this list or just looking at the list itself without knowing anything else, what the what the purpose of it is. And here is we maintain uh, the board maintains a list of projects intended to help achieve water supply sustainability on on those scales, and that it's the priority list is used to help guide spending from the from the board allocated funding sources. And then it adds a little bit more detail there about what the inclusion on the list is and isn't, and then um, a little bit more about the criteria. Then moving on. First thing you'll notice here is we've changed the, it back to portrait from um, landscape. Thought it looked a little bit better and was able to capture the information a little bit better. And so the first section here is proposed projects. And this is where the, the pool of projects, you know, where you funded several last year, this is that pool that, that you were drawing on to fund. So what you see now in the proposed projects are what's remaining. And here you, you can see there's a number of projects here, Bear Lake additional storage, cloud seeding infrastructure, build out in additional basins, the Dorshack Clearwater Pipeline Project, Lamhai Basin Settlement Implementation, Mountain Home Aquifer Water Supply. And then um, in, in talking with some board members, uh, I think there's some interest in adding some, uh, a couple new items here efficiency and capacity improvements to canal systems and Minidoka feasibility study. And we can talk about those more um, either now or in a, minute, in a minute once I've kind of finished going over the changes to the list. Why don't you finish going over the changes to the list and let's come back to talk, talk about those. Sounds great, Madam Chair. And so, this upper upper portion is those proposed projects. It lists the districts and the total estimated cost. We've also tried to incorporate the project sponsor. So there's a little more um, context when you see this list as to who's who's doing the project. Moving down to the, the second part of the list, which is now actually the bigger part of the list because these are all the projects that are under development. Um, so any project that has been funded has been moved down to this projects under development. Um, you know, the American Spall, Falls Spillway, that's the one, one that you funded last year. So we've built that in here. And again, these are all listed in alphabetical order. That's why American Falls is at the beginning. Um, and the project status here, you can see terms and conditions were approved by the board. Project activities are ongoing. Um, you know, we're trying to include just a little bit of information here, but not try and replace the, the older, progress report. Um, you can see we've built in information, you know, regarding the appropriation for Anderson Ranch, as well as the obligated funds. You see that both these 
top two here had ARPA funding. Um, and again, some details. I'll scroll down through here. As you recall, you funded some NAMPA projects last year. Those were the three that you have provided some money for. We've built those into the table. You see the city of Gooding is another one that you funded last year. We've got some information built in there. The Lewiston Orchards Exchange Project, there was some funding approved just this year for that. We've built that in here. Um, Lost Valley Reservoir, you did approve some funds and uh, terms and conditions were approved. The, the Mackey Dam Repair, the Mountain Home Air Force Base Water Supply Project, uh, the New York Canal Rehab Project, that's the one you authorized funding for last year. Um, you'll actually be considering terms and conditions at the board meeting next week for that. Uh, North Fremont is another one you funded last year. We've built that in here with some status updates. The PBAC Aquifer Water Supply Project, that's one that you're going to hear a little bit about today. Um, later in this meeting, that was funded last year by you. Um, and terms and conditions are tentatively scheduled to be presented to the board next week for, for that one. Priest Lake Water Management Project, Raft River Pipeline, that's one you funded, but you have yet to develop, we've yet to develop approved terms and conditions. Um, and then lastly here, I think we've got the Treasure Valley Water Supply Assessment. That was another one you funded last year, and that one is underway as well. Um, and we're going to put some totals here, but I wanted to verify the math here first. So um, and these numbers may change. So we, we just put to verify these numbers. We will update those, um, Madam Chair. So with that, and um, I, we've also included here an updated date on the list, because I know that the board has, the committee has discussed perhaps updating this list you know, more times than once a year. So we'll try to have a, a date there anytime we do that. So with that, I guess I would stand for any comments or questions about the proposed updates to the list. And uh, I can scroll to any portion of the, the list. Um, and then I guess I would like to highlight these two new proposed projects too at some point if there's no comments on the, the other changes to the list. Okay, why don't we go ahead and talk about the two new additions and then take all the questions after you're complete, completed your review. Sounds great. So Madam Chair, I will highlight these two here. The first one is the efficiency and capacity improvements to canal systems. Um, we didn't put a number in here. Um, remove constraints in canal systems to make more efficient, allow for automatic structures that reduce total diversions. Um, board districts, I think in discussions, thought it might apply to mostly to three and four, but it could be broader. Um, and I, the project sponsor, I think that's, unknown at this time, um, but something may become clear as we move forward. The other one there is the Minidoka feasibility study. Some of you may recall this project from the past, but it's it's a new version of it. The feasibility study for raising Minidoka Dam utilizing federal funds to District 3. Um, so I would, I would stand for comments and discussion by the committee. Are there any questions? From committee members. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Jeff. I, I would just uh, comment that uh, I like this format. I like the updates that staff has uh, given us um, uh, with regard to the new two new projects. Um, I, I don't know exactly what you want to do, I suppose, if we want them to be included in the list, we need to make a recommendation to the full board uh, to consider these be added to the uh, sustainability list. And I would make that motion to add these two new projects to the regional sustainability list. Second. Okay. It's been moved and second to add the these two projects to the regional sustainability list for consideration by the full board at the board meeting the next week. Is there any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so 
we will recommend to the full board next week to add these two projects to the regional sustainability list. Madam Chair, I have one comment on the addition of the efficiency and capacity improvement section. That should include uh, both districts one and two, as well as three and four. I would concur with that. We can make that change, Madam Chair. Yeah, Madam Chair, I I agree. It, this uh, uh, this should be available statewide. Okay. Any other so, discussion? I'm not seeing any. Uh, good work, Neely. That was a lot of effort, and it's well appreciated. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, I would make sure to highlight that it was several other staff as well helped on this list. So I want I don't want to take all the credit. Um, so with that, Madam Chair, we'll prepare a resolution for the full board's consideration for the board meeting next week on this topic, based on your recommendation. All right. Madam Chair, we'll make sure to highlight that it was several other staff as well helped on this list. So I don't want to if, some, if somebody's trying to say something, it's not coming through. It's jumbled. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next agenda item. Regional water sustainability projects, list terms and conditions approval. M Madam Chair, I would highlight that under this uh, agenda item two, we have a part B to that. It doesn't really say that on the agenda, but there is a proposed criteria update that's part of that. Um, priority list update. So um, the next item is the proposed criteria update. Okay. Um, so as I discussed in the last topic, the, the background for the regional water sustainability project going back to 2021. Um, and then to, to maintain that list, the board has adopted criteria as, as recently as, or initially in 2022. Um, that criteria for inclusion of projects defines how the project can be added, information required in the request, submittals, considerations for inclusion, and a process for removing projects from the list. Um, there was also a deadline set of December 1 for requests to be submitted annually to be added to the list. Staff has um, talked with members of this committee and, and, and the board members about proposed updates to this existing criteria, and we have prepared an update for consideration by the Finance Committee. Um, and what I'm, I've got here that I'm going to show is there's two versions of the criteria. Uh, the first version I'll show you is the proposed updates. And then behind this, which you can look at, and we can scroll there if you'd like, is the, the, the original criteria that we had that we've been utilizing for the last year. So two clean versions of the original and then a clean version of the proposed. Um, really highlighting some of the, the major changes is, is, I think there was a lot more history built into that uh, original criteria about why the list was developed, um, about the funds coming from the legislature. And I think we, we tried to eliminate some of that. It was a little wordy. There was also some definitions of sustainability relating to the sustainability policy. Um, we thought that maybe was not well utilized in this criteria, so we've cut that down. Here, it's, it starts right out with the purpose of the list. The board maintains this list to help guide spending for, for these large regional water sustainability projects and so on. Then there's a definition of entities that are eligible. These are very similar to, say, the Aging Infrastructure Grant Program. Again, it's statewide. We did add this. This, one of, this is probably the major change is that eligible projects, the board defines an eligible project as any new project that helps to achieve water sustainability on a regional basis. And there's some considerations below where you help, help define that. But um, for purposes of this program, eligible an eligible project does not include drinking or wastewater systems. Um, the expectations for inclusion on the list, that's fairly similar, but it's, I think it's important to have in here that it's not a funding commitment. 
Um, for projects that are on the list, the board may help advocate for federal funding, may help facilitate state funding consideration, and or help with letters of support related to necessary funding or permitting authorizations. And again, if there's any other, if there's other programs that maybe fit your pro those proposed projects better, um, being on the list does not just qualify them for those other, like an aging infrastructure. They'd have to apply for an aging infrastructure as well. Um, staff did not propose any changes for the process to be included on the list. You know, the December 1st deadline, um, we did not propose any changes to the information that they would be required to submit. We did clean up the considerations for inclusion on the list a little bit. And I'll just highlight these provide project provides or contributes to resolution of longstanding water supply challenges mm -hmm. or anticipated water use conflicts provide sustainability of benefits on a regional scale based on geographic area or number of impacted individuals. Um, stabilization and recovery of groundwater levels, and then the relative e economic and public benefits, um, such as, and then there's a couple of items listed there. And then, and we cleaned that up because it was a little hard to read. And then lastly, this how a project is removed from the list, we did not propose any changes to that. So that's really the, the extent of the changes staff has is proposing and we have talked to a few of you on the committee about this and then of course down here below that is the original criteria it's got a lot more of this history built in it's a lot more wordy um i'm not going to go over that but you can compare it and we've got the date there um unless you'd like me to go there i can i can certainly cover it but with that i would stand for any comments or questions on the proposed updates to the criteria for the regional water sustainability priority list. Vanili, are you looking for a recommendation to the full board to adopt a, this adjusted or amended criteria under item Madam Chair, two? Madam Chair, that is correct. We would like a recommendation for uh, adoption of this, of the proposed changes, uh, assuming you don't have any changes to what staff has developed, but yes, a recommendation for the board to consider next week. And this is being included under item number two on our amended agenda. Correct. Okay. Is there any comments about any of the changes to the criteria to the regional sustainability list? From board members or, or from committee members or other board members? All right. I'm not seeing any. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the uh, uh, criteria? Board member Gibbs, I see you took your microphone off, your mute off. Are you prepared <laughs> to say something? Uh, I, I, I'm trying to get brave enough. No, I, I looked this over and to me, it looked like a good change to uh, clean it up and make it more simple. I, I, I'm fine with recommending it yeah. to the whole board. Okay. Is that a motion? Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Okay. It's been moved by board member Gibbs and seconded by Chairman Rabel. Uh, all in favor of making a, a recommendation to the full board to adopt the amended criteria, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you, Neely. Next item. I think it's me again. Um, <laughs> Madam Chair, um, the next item is the Regional Water Sustainability Project's terms and conditions. Here, uh, the action that, that staff is looking for is uh, a recommendation on the terms and conditions for both the Boise Board of Control and the Palouse Basin Aquifer um, Committee, Regional Water Sustainability Projects. Just a little bit of background, you'll recall back in July of 2023, the board meeting in Moscow, the board approved nine sustainability projects for roughly $60 million. Again, those were funded through uh, federal rescue, uh, the ARPA funds, as well as state surplus funds, um, part of the Governor Otter's leading Idaho initiative. Two of the projects we're going to talk about today is, again, the New York Canal Rehabilitation Project, that's um, the sponsors, the Boise Board of Control, 
Um, at that Jul July meeting last year, you authorized $25 million for this in funding for this project. Um, that this would be ARPA eligible. Um, and then there's the Palouse Basin Aquifer Committee. There's the submittal they had submitted for funding back at that July 2023rd meeting was for further refinement of Alternative 5. And at that time, you authorized $182,500. So staff has worked uh, with the project sponsors to develop some terms and conditions. And um, we've brought those back for the board to consider. Um, and so I'll, I'll walk you through those. I would add that we have sponsors um, on the on the Zoom meeting for both of these projects. So we could ask them questions or um, get feedback from them as well in real time. So the attachments here, the first one is the PBAC alternatives. Um, this is for further refinement of alternative five. You'll recall they've done that water supply alternative study, which identified a number of alternatives. Um, at, 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 one, at some point, PBAC um, chose to focus on alternative five and um, they, they approached the board to get some funding for further refinement of that. And that's the 182,500 that you approved last year. Um, this would not be ARPA eligible. Staff is proposing just a standard cost reimbursement contract, 10% hold back on funds until project is completed. Um, it's very basic. Uh, PBAC is the Blue Space and Aquifer Committee. It's made up of multiple entities in the Blue Space and one of those being the city of Moscow. I think the, the, the approach here would be to contract with the city of Moscow for this work. It would make contracting much easier than going through the University of Idaho. Um, and with that, we do have uh, representatives from PBAC on the, on the Zoom today. Uh, Madam Chair, would you like to um, have them speak briefly on this or would you like to ask them any questions? Yes, I would. I'd like to turn the, the chair over to Tyler Palmer, the, the chair for the PBAC. Great. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, board members, staff. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and, and genuinely appreciate the continued attention of your board to our water issue. Uh, you guys have been great and, and your support has been incredible. I, I do think that this bears an update um, because there has been a little bit of a shift in our focus um, for uh, where we would like to utilize and where we think we can best utilize the funds that um, have been committed. Uh, subsequent to the July meeting, when we met with the board up here in Moscow, uh, there was a workshop that we held on September 21st. Um, in that workshop, we had, we had, we had as, as we had indicated, you know, with our alternatives, we've been continuing the refinement and the data gap filling for those alternatives. And we had some additional flow information that came in. There were there are a few different things that I'd like to touch on that, that sort of changed our um, approach as we looked at the alternatives. One was we had the um, the the claims in the basin for, for, by the Nez Pierce in the in the Palouse Basin adjudication, and so we got some clarity on what was being claimed in the basin. Um, the, and then in addition, we were able to. Um, generate some more data on some of the flows in the um, in the streams that were uh, indicated for use in alternative number five. So we had our technical advisor, Palouse, the Palouse Patient Aquifer Committee has two employees. One is an executive director, the other is a technical advisor. Um, we had our technical advisor uh, review some of the assumptions made in calculating the water volume and treatability in alternative five. Um, and after those reviews, uh, it really looked like uh, the, the results that we got indicated that there would be less water available and that the cost would likely be higher for storage and treatment in alternative five. Um, making that alternative maybe not our best alternative when it for our cost per acre foot of water and for the percentage of the need both for aquifer stabilization and for future uh, growth. Um, it, it really uh, it, it decreased the um, the ranking for that alternative five. So the actions that we've taken subsequent to that is we've got a proposal from Alta Science and Engineering for them to review the numbers that were generated by our technical advisor and submit a a, a, a document that updates the um, the latest water alternative supply study that they completed based on this new information. Um, 
And then also uh, we, we've been continuing our meetings um, with our regulatory entities. Um, we had a really productive meeting with the Washington Department of Ecology staff on January 31st. It was a joint meeting between IDWR and the Washington Department of Ecology. Um, and in that meeting, uh, what we heard from DOE was that while that this really a diversion from the Snake River on the Washington side was highly unlikely, um, but it was suggested by IDWR that a clear water diversion may be more likely, that they are still accepting new applications for rights in the clear water. And it was the opinion of the staff at, from IDWR that that, from a water rights perspective, may be a more effective um, approach. Alternate one, that, that, that's a version of alternate one that is in our supply study. Um, and alternate one was our second ranked alternative coming out of the supply study process. Um, and so with the concerns with alternative five, it made it so that alternative alternative one really seems like the more effective place for us to put our energies right now. Um, and so what we we had a further discussion on March 11th with IDWR staff so that we could very in, in a very in-depth way review um, what the process would look like to apply for water rights on the Clearwater or the Snake in Idaho. Um, and uh, so what we're proposing, what we will be proposing actually is a shift away from alternative five and to utilize those funds to refine alternative one. What we would like to do is get to a 10% design level, making sure that we include within that both, both DOE and IWR have committed to review our um, request for proposals for that so that we can really get serious about asking the right questions and moving a project forward. Um, and that's, we're very, we're at a phase where we want to move and we want to be active. And we have heard the board as they have told us, Hey, we want to see action on this. Um, but we also want to make sure that we're careful through that process and that we keep all of our partners updated. We've had meetings with the tribe, IDWR, DOE, um, meetings with you all in light of this pivot. Um, and in some conversations with, with, um, with staff, with the water board, um, and with members of the board, I, what, what, I think may be more appropriate is for us to come to your May meeting in Sandpoint and present a comprehensive uh, review of the information that has led to this shift to alternative one um, to the board for their consideration. Um, so I, I guess that's kind of a long winded way to say that we've we've had so, a reason to shift priorities and um, I'm, I'm happy to try and field any questions you all might have or hear any recommendations or suggestions you might have. Thank you, Tyler. I do appreciate that uh, th this new information, and I I do think that this is a a, a more meaningful um, pivot, if you if you will. Uh, and I look forward to your presentation at our board meeting in May, explaining in further detail how this is a modification of of alternative one. Um, is there any? So, are you asking to defer? receipt of the money then and not spend money on further refining alternative five is that is that your request for today well yeah what really really i, I think that would be our request for today i've PBAC has some funds that we can use. We're, we're working on, we're going to continue our work on generating our request for proposals to get to that 10% design on alternative one um we're unlikely to have that ready before May for dissemination anyway. So I think that that what we would what what I, what I would hope is that at that May meeting, action could be taken by the board to approve um, the use of those funds toward the refinement of Alternative One. And I do believe we're having a finance committee meeting sometime in early May, so we could review that prior to the board meeting. Is that correct, Neely? That's correct, Madam Chair. Uh, and Madam Chair, I just I, I would add that we I have a meeting today um, with the Palouse Space Aquifer Committee, and on the agenda for today is the approval of the proposed contract with Alta to uh, to review and refine those numbers. And so that would the 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 anticipated schedule from them would have them providing me with a final report on that prior to the May meeting. And so I think the May meeting could be a very productive meeting in which I'll have hard numbers that I can present to the board that will uh, reinforce the 
uh, impetus for the transition to alternative one. Right. Are there any questions? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to clarify what you'd like to uh, have from them for that finance committee in early May, just so we, 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 it's clear. Uh, what we'd like to see is, is the, the new modified alternative one with the clear water as the source instead of the snake for the water supply, and then your next steps and the funding needed for the next steps. And it sounds like and the ten percent design is is where you'd like to go next. That's that's correct. I can work with Tyler to, to coordinate that and make sure we have those materials for that meeting as it's scheduled. And I'll make sure you're aware of when that is, Tyler. That sounds great, Neely. Yeah, happy to coordinate, and we'll be sure that we have uh, whatever the the uh, committee needs for that. And I just want to clarify that the, the purpose of the 10% design is to get a more accurate cost estimate and a potential path for the water supply. Is that yeah, yes, Madam Chair, what, what we anticipate is to aggressively move forward. And so what, what we would want to answer with the 10% supply are enough questions that we can then move to a 30% design phase and, and actually at that point, look at submitting an application for water rights. And so this is something that we would, we would want to move forward with uh, in, in as an aggressively thoughtful manner as we can. Okay. Are there any questions from finance committee members? Any questions from other board members? Is everybody comfortable with the direction that PBAC is headed? I'm going to take that as a yes. I, I was on mute, Madam Chairman. I I I appreciate PBAC reevaluating and and making a decision to potentially shift before they spent too much money or any on an alternative that they they don't believe is the best alternative. So I look forward to hearing back from them in May and. Hopefully, uh, they'll be zeroing in on a plan that uh, we can get started on. Yes, very well said. Um, so, we're going to table, or I guess not make a recommendation to the full board for spending any money at this time on the PBAC project. All right. Okay, well, I think we are... Uh, thank you, Tyler and and Paul. I see that you're on there. Thank you um, for making this presentation today. Uh, your input is definitely appreciated. Madam Chair, Chairman Rabel, and members, thank you so much. We we really appreciate your time and genuinely appreciate your continued support and uh, look forward to furthering the conversation. Okay, Neely, I think we're ready to move on. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the next set of terms and conditions for consideration, and again, this is a recommendation that you would make for these terms and conditions for the board to consider at the meeting next week. This is for the New York Canal Rehab Project. A um, little bit of background here, just so it's it's understood. It's um, you guys awarded twenty five million um, for to replace six miles of canal lining in the New York Canal. Um, they're proposing to use an innovative geo composite lining, <laughs> composite lining that consists of a polyester non woven bonded to a poly polyethylene. I can't even pronounce it, so I'm not going to do that. But uh, the project includes replacement of approximately six miles of that existing concrete and asphalt lining with that prefabricated multi layer membrane um, and a concrete cap over a six year period. Um, staff is proposing a cost reimbursement not to uh, where the board has approved funding for this project and the, the sponsor would pay the remainder of the cost, 10% hold back on funds. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, this is, would be ARP eligible. So project sponsors would comply with both the board standard project contract terms, but also the ARPA related terms. And that's something that we've worked through for some of the previous projects. Um, and I've provided those 
to the the sponsor, the Boise Board of Control, and they they, I believe they're agreeable to those, um, and they are on the Zoom meeting and can um, address any questions committee may have for them. And with that, I would stand for discussion. Thank you, Neely. Who do we have from the Boise Project Control? Yes, Madam Chairman, this is Bob Carter, uh, project manager. Tom Redhaller is here. At, he's the assistant manager. And Mary Sue Chase is our uh, grants writer. And you have all reviewed the terms and conditions and are amiable to them? Yes, yes, we are. Hey, are there any questions for the Boise Project Control or Neely on this from finance committee members? Madam Chair, I'd also highlight that we have Megan Carter from the AG's office on the on the Zoom. She's analyzed that ARPA eligibility and she can answer some questions related to that. She also, I think, will be talking to the board um, executive session on this topic um, next week. Okay. Madam Chairman, this is Mark. Yes, Mark. Uh, I have a question. I, I think I'm reading it here. This project's going to take six years to complete. Is that correct? Yes, that's that's our goal right now. Uh, we're we're going to try to do the six miles a mile per year. Um, we feel good. We've already got uh, you know pieces in place. Uh, an owner's rep. And we're going to be going out to bid here shortly uh, for contractors, and we feel that contractors can get the job done a mile per year. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Jeff. Uh, maybe Neely or somebody could answer what's the timeline. I, I know we have to have the ARPA money committed by this December, but when do we have to have the project completed? Is that six-year window? Or are we going to have to front load uh, the first portion of this construction with the ARPA money uh, to make sure that we don't have that rescinded? Madam Chair, I can answer that question. Thank you. Uh, yes, the, the funds need to be spent by uh, the end of 2026. So this contract would be set up similar to the American Falls <clears throat> spillway um, project where the um, funds will be paid out in... Um, pieces over the next couple of years, but uh, Boise Project will be responsible for holding the funds appropriately while they finish the project. Okay, follow up, Madam Chairman, and there there yeah. won't be clawback that, uh, that the project wasn't completed. Is, isn't there ARPA language that the projects have to be completed, or is it just no. money spent? It's just money spent. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you for those questions. But Megan, before you go, I have another question regarding that. It's a cost reimbursement contract. So we clearly will be sending money before the cost of it incurred. How will that work? Uh, we might need to change it from a cost reimbursement contract language um, and have it set up to where uh, there's stringent reporting requirements of what was spent and how the money was used so that we can keep that um, in our uh, documents and files and make sure that it was appropriately spent. So are these terms and conditions appropriate for a recommendation to the full board or do you want to modify them before we make a recommendation? before our board meeting next week. Um, we will just need to change that it's a cost reimbursement contract. Madam Chair, that was the one place where legal was doing some analysis at the time these were being prepared. And I think uh, you're correct to point out that that's probably not appropriate. It would probably be installments similar to the American Falls. Um, and we can update that, but it would be probably what several and four or five installments of the, the the money to get it expended in that timeline. 
So we can replace the word cost reimbursement with installment contract. Would that be appropriate? Yes. Okay. Is there a, a recommendation to the full board to adopt these terms or to recommend these terms and conditions with the noted change? Madam Chairman, this is Mark. I'd make that recommendation. Is there a second? I'll check it, Madam Chair. This is Dale. Thank you, Dale. Been moved and second to approve to make a recommendation to the full board of the terms and conditions for the New York Lining project with the change from cost reimbursement to installment contract. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. All right, congratulations. <laughs> One step closer. Thank you very much. We appreciate all the work that you folks have done and Neely and his staff, and uh, we're looking forward to it. All right. Next item. All right. The last item that I'm going to present on today is uh, a proposed or a potential new um, grant program, a groundwater to surface water conversion project grant program. This is something that I think has been in discussion for, for a while. Um, amongst various folks. Um, I know we've kicked it around internally here and I've been directed by, by board members to uh, begin initiating uh, a grant program. So uh, the board has proposed initiating a new grant program to support conversion of lands irrigated from groundwater to surface water irrigation. Um, so basically right now, I just wanted to introduce the concept. There's no action required. I wanted because I haven't had this discussion with the with the full committee or even with the full board, um, just a few of you. Uh, I wanted to lay out kind of what the guidance I had been given and kind of where I was headed, and just to get some some initial feedback. And then I I'm proposing to bring back a more fully developed concept and criteria uh, for board for finance committee review potentially at an upcoming finance committee. Um, so with that, I would basically say that, you know, this would, depending on any appropriation or um, use, this would probably draw on water, ma water management account funding, um, at least initially. I think there's a desire to focus this, this program on the ESPA, but I think we want to develop the criteria so it could be applied throughout the state if there's that desire. Um, I think, uh, you know, in talking with some of the board members, there's probably project funding limits, you know, you know, at least a few million dollars. You guys are thinking of trying to do some significant projects. The eligible entities I'm thinking about would be similar to what um, are eligible for, say, the regional water sustainability and the aging infrastructure grants. Um, I do think, you know, in talking with with some of the board members, there's a desire to really try and help with some of these projects. So looking at maybe cost share of up to 50% for some of these conversions that, uh, and typically I think what we're gonna see are, are soft conversions. Those are the, the ones that have variable offsetting of their groundwater pumping, you know, for a portion of the year, but not a permanent one. Um, but we could potentially offer even a higher cost share for those more permanent conversions, but those are um, far and few between. I think some of the, the the ranking or what we would like to incentivize, you know, uh, would be reach gains in particular reaches where there's benefits accruing to those reaches, say in the ESPA or in other basins. Um, looking at the amount of groundwater pumping reduction, I think would be important to make sure that you're not just shifting to increased water use of surf, uh, just increasing the water use. Um, and again, these regional projects I think would be good so we may look at trying to incentivize a bit more of those. Um, and, and so I think, you know, I'll, we'll flush out more details. But right now, I think the timeline in talking with board members, there's a desire to sort of roll something out in the fall. Um, but staff is going to work on developing a, a timeline of all the board's grant programs and then bring that to the finance committee so we can make a decision together on what is optimal for both the stakeholders in applying for this grant program for timing, but also for staff in terms of 
managing all the processing processes internally. So with that, I would just stand for any comments or questions or feedback on this proposed grant program that I'll bring back later. Does anyone want to, I, I see um, board member Stevenson's box lit up. Dean, do you have a question or, or comment? Uh, no, I just don't know how to run Zoom apparently. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> oh. Chairman Rabel, do you want to uh, expand on the program and the need? Well, I I just think uh, I think everyone's aware that uh, uh, the director has appointed a, an advisory committee to help establish a groundwater management plan on the ESPA in conjunction with the uh, groundwater management area that's been declared on the ESPA. And one of the things that that committee is is wrestling with is uh, how to reduce uh, groundwater withdrawals. And this program would be targeted uh, initially uh, to uh, give uh, water users uh, some help, some incentive to convert from diverting groundwater to using surface water that is also pertinent to the same land. Uh, and so there's an opportunity here to help stabilize the SPA. I think there may be opportunities in other basins uh, where aquifers are stressed to do the same thing, uh, where there's a reliable surface water supply. So uh, that's kind of the genesis of uh, the thinking behind this. And, and uh, hopefully we can uh, put something in place that will help uh, uh, manage some of the stresses on uh, aquifers across the state. Excellent. I agree. I think this is a could be a, a a good tool to use in that in several areas of the state. Uh, it's important that we don't increase the usage, though. So we have to be thoughtful about how we go forward with this. But any other comments? So we're not prepared to take any action at this time. Is that correct, Neely? That's correct, Madam Chair. I'm not proposing any action at this time. Just uh, sort of permission to bring this concept back um, if, if you guys were receptive to the idea. Sounds like we are, and uh, look forward to further conversations on it. Sounds great. Thanks. That's it. Okay, we're to the next item on the agenda. Um, Brian Patton, do you have anything to add? Um, Madam Chair, just one item I want to bring, let you uh, know about is the IDWR trailer appropriation bill. Uh, that This is the, the bill that has the governor's proposed uh, water project funding for, for this year, as well as a number of other items for the department's budget. That has passed both houses of the legislature and is on its way to the governor for his signature. That's excellent news. All right. Is there any concern about the governor not signing it? <laughs> Sounds Madam, like it might be in business for another year. Yeah, Madam Chair, I, I believe the governor intends to sign that next Tuesday. Um, I don't think uh, that it, he would be informing people of that if he intended to veto it. So I, I think I think we're in pretty good shape. Excellent. Great. We can continue our good work across the state. Any other items? Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, this is, are we gonna have pictures taken at our board meeting? Uh, coming up. Yeah, I can answer that one. Uh, yes, uh, we are scheduled to do pictures for all the board members uh, at eight o'clock next Friday morning before the board meeting starts. Okay. Okay. Good to know. So yeah. we'll we'll actually start the start the executive session at eight thirty and and have pictures scheduled for right at eight o'clock. That's a good question, Board Member Vanstone. 
Yeah. <laughs> I have Any to say. Other... <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm good. Okay. Any other items? I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. Is that correct? Well, I can certainly make that motion, Madam Chairman. I move we adjourn. Seconded. Okay, so move and second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? We are adjourned. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good job. Thank you. So long. <laughs>